Bristol Community College Bayhawks versus Springfield Technical Community College. That it is, got done with the women's game. Now on to the men's game. BCC striking first blood. Yep, we saw this work very well in the last game. Ahmed Connor on the rebound, driving all the way to the hole. Connor kicks it back up for three. No good. Missed by Justin Cruz, coming down with it in Vegas. BCC likes to play down pace. They love to push it. They love to push the basketball and push back that knee on the defensive end. From the elbow, Marcus Mitchell can't get it to go. Fast pace, but very patient. And no one's back on defense. Pope got fouled on the play. Watched by Corey Green taking the ball himself. Corey Green, so athletic. Getting in the corner. Quincy Pope for three. 
Oh, Corey Green with a quick steal. Zachary Vega did a good job following the shot, but again hit the shot clock. It's going to go to the Rams. A great job from Corey Green getting the steal. Corey Green was a big contributor last game, shooting four threes in the first half. Really, all BCC's three-point shooting was they shot over 500 last game from the three-point line. Vega find an open Corey Green. He continues his hot shooting into this game. He's doing it all. Foul goes to Cross, and now Winbush going to the line. See what he can do from the three uh, foul shot line. Joshua Winbush had 19 points in the last game, 11 rebounds, and we talked to Coach Rob Del Lou, and he you know, said that that was, he could have scored more, he could have done more out there. That was like a quiet 19. Joshua Winbush gives the, gives the Bayhawks something that they haven't had too much in the past. A six foot seven forward slash center that can do it all. Josh Winbush from Bar High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana. This is the second part. This is the second that was a lob. Pass, another one. Oh. He's going to get fouled on the play. What would be another block from Winbush? I think Winbush is going to find himself out of the game right now. Not getting back on defense. Springfield's having opportunities to throw that length of the court pass. BCC not getting back today. And I think you're right because we see how Colin Coban getting ready to get in the game. He's listed at 6'6", probably going to be taking Winbush out of the game. No one's got the ball, it's loose. Zachary Vega trying to get it. I think he's the one who'll have possession. No fell into Hakan's hands, he gave it right to Mitchell. That's going to be a foul on 11. I think he wins best hair on the team, too. Remember last year I had all the crazy hairstyles? I guess Zachary Vega has got a bit of red in the back.
time here in the early going. If this is anything like the women's game, Doc Craig, you're going to be in for a heck of a show. Mitchell. It's the green. Dump it in. Vega. Puts it up off the glass. No good. Oh, Pope getting it. He's going to save it. That was Robert Jenkins kind of tripping over himself. And the foul is going to be on Hakan. You got guys who, uh, you know, they're just well known by their first name. He'll be, maybe he'll be one of those guys. It doesn't strike as much fear though as Hakan. Like, like if I have a six foot six guy named Hakan coming after me, I'm scared for my life. Oh, Green gets it back. Quincy Pope. Oh, Quincy Pope almost got it back immediately. Now, Justin Cruz with a good job creating space. It looked like he had a good lob going up, but again, just couldn't connect. Oh, Mitchell just taking it himself. BCC with some great passing. Nope, even can't get into fall. Good shot selection from BCC. Zachary Vega is going to be someone we see getting a lot of rebounds in this game. He's listed at 6'4". He's got some bounce in his step. Yeah, BCC already off to a great start this season, so once you add that piece, they might just be unstoppable. Almost stolen from Hakan, but it gets away. So Hakan tried to get the steal, really causing the distraction. Coming over with his teammate, Joshua Winbush. Both coming over 
for Bob Bob High School in Louisiana. Louisiana, home of the Great Britain Spears. <laughs> That's gonna be like a season long thing. Yeah. I have to say it in every game. <laughs> Got to get the Britney Spears reference. Tried to get it to Khan, but got intercepted from Giovanni Cross. Foul's going to be on Cross, though. So BCC with a second chance. That is Jerry Cruz. He's coming in for. He's coming in for cross. Cross with two fouls. Oh, is he not listed on yours? Oh. It's because I'm better. Yeah, he did. <laughs> not even hand you, just thrown up. Just like here, take it. Rams trying to play some tight defense. Almost got the end one. Oh, Coban doing a good job following the shot. Got the rebound. Looked like a very contested rebound. It's a tough one to get. Yeah, you had pieces like like we were talking about Josh uh, Josh Wimbush along with Zachary Vega and Hakan Koban. That's gonna be this is gonna be a very deadly team on the boards. Gets the second one. Damian Market Martin right on Justin Cruz. Damian Martin had a pretty good game last game too. He's able to shoot from the three point line pretty well. There's a good tip from Caban getting it to Green. And Green might be hurt. Yeah, it looked like he hurt his ankle or something. Quincy Pope coming out. Now Steven Torres is going to come in for him. Torres will come in for Green. Green looking to be walking better. Mobilizing better on that leg. Here in the 
base. First year over here in Fall River. I've come in a long way. Well, I guess what he shouldn't say is first year in the States. He was actually playing in a tournament over here in Las Vegas, and Coach Rob Del Lou, long story short, found this kid. Mm, what a find he may be. He had, the, he had some connections. And someone I want to bring up was on the rebound from uh, Corey Green before, right before he got hurt. It was uh, it was tipped by Hakan, so this is something that really helps with adding height. They may not get rebounds per se, but they'll tip it up and get it to another teammate for to get the rebound. Yep, Damian Martin, not the biggest guy on the court, but he went flying right into the paint to bounce it off the glass for two. And look at, and I was gonna say, look at that aggressive defense. I think it's another foul. It is, I think, I think it might be. Yeah, but he's probably going to be taken out pretty soon. So I think that's his third. And as we're going to be seeing... Yep, so we'll get to see what he can do. Talk about PCC limiting them only six points so far. Yeah. That's defense for you. Defense is a commitment. You gotta commit to defense. Thor <laughs> <laughs> is trying to find someone. No good. Malik's got it though. So it's going to be the sixth team foul for the Bayhawks. First one for Provident in the game. See Ahmed Connor trying to sell. Quincy Pope with the rebound flying through the hole. Torres coming in trying to get a steal with a lot of contact. We saw something close, Steven Torres come flying in trying to get the steal, a lot of contact on the play, so the foul is drawn and it is gonna be called on Steven Torres. He was another guy last game we saw had a good, uh, good game from the three point line. That was a very spread out win for the Bayhawks. And as you said, it really wasn't any one guy. Get to the basket. 
Yep, big time. I guess they're calling a foul away from the play. Well, Provit lost it. He's trying to get it back, though. He does. Yeah, Provit lost it. Had it again. Lost it again. Trying to get out of bounds. Says whatever. Throws it at one of the Rams players, and it gets kicked out of bounds. So it'll stay the Bayhawks ball. Yeah, Luis Rosario was absent from the game yesterday. Or the other day, I should say. Luis Rosario is a second year returning guy, returning player. He had some key moments, was a key contributor, got some key minutes last year. Yeah, we're gonna say I was gonna say we uh, he was he was used very sparingly last year, but came up big in some of the tournament play. Definitely did. October's over, but you can always wear pink. Martin almost got a steal. Yeah, Steven Torres, I think it was off Torres, saw Martin go flying. Rams finally get into double digits halfway through the first half. Yeah, Rams starting to play aggressive offense. And Steven Torres looking like a wide receiver. Tip by Martin Quincy Pope. Yeah, both teams not taking a breath. And Steven Torres did a good job recognizing that his defense was going to get the rebound and makes his way downtown to be able to get to it. Yeah, 
by the Vega. Nice entry pass. The Yankee gets his shot to serve. Cruz, the big Cruz. Torres comes out. Marcus Mitchell and Corey Green to come in. Martin will come out as well. Corey Green seems to be walking okay, which is good to see. Quincy Pope gets the rebound. And Luis Rosario checks out. Malik Hester in. It's the best way to go, get some fresh legs, especially how this fast-paced offense and defense works. Malik tries, I think Malik tries, to, and he does, he gets a charge. Yeah, he's a good job, 225 pounds. Hmm. 6'2", 225, yeah, I can see it. down to a knee but kept his dribble. <laughs> Your appreciation. And a beautiful rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Earlier, earlier today, to jump, the, jump off the telecast with the home Lucy Chabal. Travel. Oh, 
Hubbard, foul pass inside. A lot of contact. Yep, sophomore forward. Springfield Tech made up a uh, pretty well balance of sophomore and freshman where BCC is made up mainly of freshmen. Block from Malik. And now BCC's offense starting to get things going. Oh, there's a steal. Marcus Mitchell. I think Demetrius Rogers just there's an Oscar after that. Still got over six minutes left in this half, and then we got a whole nother half. Yeah, Corey Green couldn't catch up to it. Way too far in front of him. Good hustle, ankle probably still bother him a little bit. One thing I like right there from Marcus Mitchell, he took a second to take a peek, see if he had anyone to anyone to give it to for a better shot. Saw that there was inside taking it himself and getting the layup. Definitely a good decision. He had, he had somebody rolling with him. I believe he had Muhammad, Muhammad Hester rolling with him. And BCC, you gotta give them credit. They were they were in danger of, of they were in danger of letting this way, this one get away with them. Coach Rob Dale Lou out of the timeout. After, um, after talking to his team and laying into him, BCC has come out of that and um, on a little bit of a mini run now. It was 24 to 20 at one point, or 22 to 20, and then BCC is on a 7 0 run. 6 I can't stress that enough how important it is today being Veterans Day. I know I got a lot of family who served in the military, you know. Again, sitting right beside here and former Navy member. So yeah, it's always a special day of the year for me. I'm sure it is for you, Dave. We'd love to see a BCC win. Yeah, definitely a BCC win. After that, drink it in, man. 
That Marcus Mitchell, only 167 pounds, but he knows how to throw his weight. Yeah, Mitchell staying on him. Oh, is that goaltending? I think just the goaltending call. That is what the crowd paid to see on this Veterans Day. seen Vega take a shot from the three-point range. time in the world. Yeah, you were saying way to find him. I thought, uh, I was looking at Corey Green the whole time. I thought that Pope was going to give him a little bounce pass into the paint, but no, he's able to find, uh, able to find Marcus Mitchell, and honestly, that's the better call. Yeah, I don't know what he told them, but whatever it was, it worked. Now BCC trying to get the, struggling a little bit on the rebounds. Yeah, Cruz knocked it out of Malik's hands, but they're going to say it was off of, uh, off of Cruz, obviously. They call him charging or is it on him?
Takes forever, but it goes in. Showing some good handles. The bigger Cruz. I think he's saying he was out of bounds. The ball crossed the out of bounds line. Yeah, Vega dove on top of it, but just couldn't uh, keep it in bounds. I kind of thought Pope was going to try to go for the three, but decides to go in for himself and tries to put up the two, but he gets fouled on the play, so he should be shooting two anyway. No, I did know they used to not have a three-point line. Yeah. I just think of like the footage from like the Bob Cousy era. Bob Cousy was way ahead of his time. He was. You see some like Bob Cousy highlights the way he passes. Bob Cousy, what a guy. Cruz cruising along. Steven Torres with a block. I think they're calling a foul on him, though. And from the sound of it, I thought Steven Torres got all ball on that. Steven Torres is one of those guys who will have sneaky good games. That's definitely a legitimate scoring team right here. Sure. And a legitimate defensive team at that. Yeah, majority of this team can shoot. There's a lot of good rebounders here. Some flashy passing. This is a complete team. Tries to get an alley-oop. Yeah, I don't think Vega was really expecting that. I think it was a travel on him. Yeah, pretty sure he, he kind of stepped back and fell, and I think they pretty sure they called a travel on Vega. Towel boy. That's the sweat box. Yeah, 
between the girls' game, we see the girls going to the floor every couple I seconds. I remember last year we saw some guys getting thrown around. I like to see what high school can afford that. <laughs> In LaFrance Gymnasium. On Vega coming in, turning it up, and he's going to get the foul and the shot. <laughs> he's good down low. What? I came in late. There's just so much action going on. Vega again. Corey Green avoiding Robert Jenkins just like that. See Damian Martin checking in, probably for Steven Torres. Tor Torres picked up his third foul, so we're probably going to see him on the bench quite a bit. Torres been kind of on the pretty much all of his fouls. You could argue weren't really his fault. You know, he had the blocking foul right there, and then he had that. He was just backing up his feet. Yeah, I feel like we said that about everybody. Yeah, exactly. Again, this is just a complete team. Martin probably is going to hang on to it, let the, let the clock drop. Yep. So, yeah, Rams might get a chance at one shot at this to end the half at least. Yeah, he's going to throw it up. I'm surprised he got rim off that. Yeah, I'm surprised he was able to get that off and, and come that close. Robert Jenkins, that would have counted, but not the doing. All right, so at the end of the first half, BCC finishes the first half strong with a strong run after being up by only two points. 22 to 20, it's now 46 to 27 at the half. So for Bishop Colley High School here at Fall River, Massachusetts, stay tuned for second half action. Men's Bayhawks basketball. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bishop Conley High School here in Fall River, Massachusetts, where the Princeton Community College men's basketball team is up 46 to 27 on Springfield Tech. Bayhawks were kind of a little bit in a little bit of a malaise, Greg, there in the um, in the uh, early goings of the first half, and with about 6:26 or about with about 6:26 left to play. In the first half, Craig, Craig Coach Rob Del Luke called a timeout and uh, really laid it to his team. It was BCC. They were not hustling back on defense. They were committing stupid fouls, turned the ball over, and um, getting, getting beat to the spot a lot of times defensively. And offensively, their offense really, really was not flowing the way that we've seen it flow in the last game. So. Craig, what do we have for stats here? BCC went on a hell of a run there at the end. Uh, they were up 24 to 
Yeah, BCC once again doing a really good job, really spreading out the stat sheet. A lot of main contributors. Uh, right now the main guy is really Zachary Vega, who's doing it both on the boards, on defense and offense as well. As he scored 13 points, which is leading BCC. And then you also got a couple guys with nine points, like Corey Green and Marcus Mitchell, which Marcus Mitchell has made a big impact on this team. Then you got a lot of other guys with like four, two, and one points. But hey, you know, everyone's just contributing, not only on the points, but we're seeing assists, we're seeing rebounds, we're seeing steals, we're seeing it all from this team. See Josh Wimbush back in this game for the first time since the opening minutes. Yeah, Connor really trying to go coast to coast. Yeah, you can imagine the type of talking to they got from their coach during halftime, and they're really coming right out of the gate with all sorts of intensity. As the first shots missed from Ahmed Connor. Yeah, it was, we saw a lot of fouls in this game. Yeah, both teams were in foul trouble in the first half. Both teams were in the double bonus, you know, a little, a little halfway through the first half. Yeah, and for BCC, I think it's Steven Torres who has the most. I think he has three. Quincy Pope gets the pass from three. Drops him home for two. 50 to 30. BCC's bench really getting into this now. Nice pass from Vega. Getting it out of there. Yeah, I agree with you. Wimbush was, we've seen him a lot on the defensive end, but not too much on the offensive end. He did have that sneaky 19 points. He was named our Bayhawks player of the game last time. That is why Corey Green is one of the leading scorers in this game. Oh, he might get another one. Corey Green has scored not. Corey Green has scored eight points in about two seconds right there. Man, Corey Green just really on these last couple like couple possessions right there. He's not even, he's not cherry picking or anything. He's just he's just getting it done. I thought so too. I had been thinking about that. Because he doesn't look 5'5. Five five. He looks a bit taller than that. And Damian Martin looks like he's at least 5'8, five 5'9. Five hmm. Yeah, as someone who's 5'6, I usually try to get more height, not less height. Yeah, because once you establish yourself, it's cool that you can be 5'5 and doing all this stuff. Yeah, 
off somebody's foot there, and then Cruz ran for three. Cruz we've seen on the handles and really directing traffic throughout this game, but not doing much from the offensive side. So now we see a three from him. Aw, he hyped it up so much. I can see Deborah Banks in the stand saying, come on. Just wanted the safe basket. Redemption? No. <laughs> He's just teasing him now. Yep, he was leading them at the half. He's on the ground, he's got to find someone, they're going to call a travel. Yeah, Wimbush trying to get the, trying to do the dirty work. Yeah, I was just going to say that he's got a lot of reach. Mitchell. Kevin Thompson looking like Clay Thompson. He took his time thinking about it, saying, you're going to give me this much open space, I'm going to shoot it right in your face. I kind of thought that was going to roll out. And Winbush just threw it way too wide of Corey Green. Wimbush with the block, and I think they're calling the foul on him. And no, it's actually on Zachary Vega drawing the foul. That is his second, second personal, or second team foul for the Bayhawks, also Vega's second personal. We're five minutes in this half, and a lot less fouls so far. Yeah, you remember the last half, a lot of them came in like final few minutes really, final five minutes. Yeah, a lot of fouls. Both teams were in the double bonus early. 63 to 40. Here's Mitchell, dropping it into Vega. Back out to Green. Rogers lays it in. Nice dribble drive in the dish. 
Mitchell taking his time. Vega lost it. And travel. thought about it. Oh, and Pope lost it. Goes right into the hands of Demetrius Rogers. Rogers taking it all the way coast to coast. Drops the, drops the dime. They'll call the foul. Nice take by Rogers. Avenue yeah, foul goes to Vega. Yeah, he's starting to rack him up. I think that's like his third or fourth. We've seen him at the defensive end too quite a bit. Bang, bang play from BCC. Great passing game, finding Marcus Mitchell. Vega's going to be coming out. You see Steven Torres coming in. That's going to be Vega's fourth, I think. And Hakan also coming in. coming out. Yeah, he's been one of the, probably the biggest contributor for this team and he has four fouls with 13 remaining. You might see him come down the last couple minutes but he's gonna be sitting for a while I think. Is he Pope with a good pass? There you go, now you're seeing Wimbush assert himself. He likes to be a good teammate, but he definitely has the chance to score a lot of points if he wanted to. It depends he wants to take the Bill Russell approach or the Wilt Chamberlain approach. Hmm. 
Wimbush just out of his reach. Don't say that too often. Torres been getting quite a few blocks in this game. Torres listed at 5'11", playing like he's a lot bigger than that. Here's something we haven't seen too often. The two bigs are in there. You see Hakan Koban and Josh Wimbush in it. Fell right into Rogers, fell in between two of the Bayhawks. Damian Martin coming in for Marcus Mitchell. Marcus Mitchell has been BCC's hottest shooter right now. He got like two inches off the ground and just brings it down. Wimbush swatting him like a fly saying, get that out of here. Big men getting it done. That's exactly what's happening. Justin Cruz checking back in this game. Just short, it was a little bit out of Winbush's reach. Oh, 
Offensive foul on Winbush. That's Wimbush's fourth foul. If I was Wimbush. <laughs> or if I was me. I would have been home and I would have jammed that soccer. Undefeated, never lost, Dave Cardoza. <laughs> On my home court, no. Someone in the stands is Alonzo Ball UCLA jersey, so. All the references. <laughs> Profit. It's going to be number three for Provit, number eight for uh, BCC in the half. Hester. I haven't seen him too much in this game, but he already has three fouls, from the time, or actually four fouls from the time he's been in. Cabana, good job getting the rebound. And he has been so good from out there. Catch and shoot action, draining it every time. On the other hand, break one. No good. And another rebound. Put back and a foul. And one. Demetrius Rogers. Let's see if he can let's see if he can complete the three point play. That's Demetrius Rogers. We've seen him on this end of this play so many times in this game. It's mainly been him. Can't get it again, Steven Torres. And Kevin Thompson tried to draw the charge, but it didn't work. Not a great day for the Wu Tang clan. <laughs> Something that the Rams really haven't been able to do is make free throws. And I don't know if it's just BCC's defense or what, but the Rams really haven't had a three-point shooter in this game. Majority of the Rams' points really just coming from layups. I think really the only three we've seen this game was from Justin Cruz. Three-pointer from actual three-point range. 
That's the exact opposite from BCC. We've seen plenty of people make threes for us. He settles for two, but still good shot selection. And coming in with the steal. Yeah, we didn't see him last game, and he's coming up big in this game. Lost it, but Hakan trying to get it. Yeah, Martin knocked it down and rolled out of bounds off of Martin. Kind of surprised with the game we've been seeing. They didn't call a foul on him, but he'll get away with it clean. Tip to Corey Green again, the just the height keeping it up. Mitchell for three. Boom. Eminem. The trifecta. Yeah, he wears number 30, and I think I know of another number 30 who tends to make those shots. That's Curry. He's shooting about as well as him. I don't know how many three uh three pointers he missed, but not too many he's missed. Yeah, I can see him being one of the leaders on this young team. Yeah. I remember last game, he was doing it all too. He also, I think he led the team in assists. He had like six or seven. Something to notice, he's so calm on his three-point shots. Like, it's so smooth, so calm. Yeah, Springfield's been drawing a lot of fouls, but they haven't been able to do anything from the foul line. Like, they'd have at least 70 points right now if they could make their free throws. Back to Mitchell, another three, stop and pop, no good. You see Luis Rosario back in the game. And immediately draws a foul. Yeah, we obviously we all wish him the best. Yeah, he was very clutch and he was very clutch in the tournament play. Got a lot of key minutes in that game. 
that made some key points and some key assists. That one decided not to go in. Rebuild, <laughs> reclaim. This is what BCC's defense does so well, wind down that shot clock. Three subs now from BCC. And another foul on Rosario. BCC, with the exception of Alexander Holloway, who we've yet to see this season, has used everyone on their roster, and they've all been contributing. Rogers, pretty much their entire offense.
Going to be off of Giovanni Cross. Hakan, have we seen him at the line too, uh, that much? We haven't seen him too much, I don't think, from the line. He's been good on the rebounds and the blocks, but yeah, haven't seen him too much from the line. Do you think he's taller or shorter? I'm just saying, looking at it from his vantage point. Actually, I, honestly, I don't, I've, I've come across him. And he is tall, so just, I don't know. Like, Winbush is only one inch taller than him. He looks like he, he just seems way taller. I, don't know. I think it's the wingspan. I think uh, Winbush still has a bigger wingspan. Now the Rams starting to get some three-point attempts. Yep, late in the game, having a little bit better of a sh uh, shooting showcase, but again, too little, too late. I don't know if Provit was trying to find a teammate or he was just trying to bounce it off one of their legs. on my cord. I'm telling you, it doesn't have the intimidation like Hakan or Koban does. <laughs> the modern day Marahat. How do you say it? Mararaja? Someone drew the foul. Yeah, Rogers going to the line again, been saying that a lot this game. But again, he just can't connect with him. It's like those carnival games, you know, where the lid is, or the the rim is just as big as the basketball, so you got to hit it absolutely perfectly. Did those a couple of years ago with my girlfriend at the time. I spent about five to ten dollars trying to win her a prize. It got to the point where I didn't even care about the prize. It was all about pride at that point. I wanted to prove that I could do it. She eventually cut me off and didn't get to win her anything. I think by the time I got to 10 bucks, she's like, okay, you're done. <laughs> yeah. You see, but if it was a, uh, hey, if it was like a regular regulation sized hoop, though, I would have made it like every time. <laughs> yeah, they are. Rosario getting his first points. I laugh at the people who actually try to control their top rate. All you need to do is push it through the thing. 
Just lob it. Yeah. See, I like the three-point contest because that's actually like at least regular. Like it's actually it's an actual uh, it's like an actual hoop. Pretty much the only thing you have to worry about is if it's a windy day. I had a friend when we were in Florida our senior year during our senior trip. He, that was what he was most hyped about at like Universal Studios or wherever we were. That there was the uh, three-point contest. But he had uh, he had done arms before, like at the the weight room in the hotel. So, yeah, that's what we all said. So he missed every shot except like the last one, and we were like, "This is what you were the most excited about, and you couldn't do anything." Um, Canopy? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I did this one at, uh, I think it was like Atlantic City in New Jersey or something. Yeah, well, it's, it's set up like the three-point contest at the All-Star game, oh, yeah, right, right. so it's just like on racks. It's on racks. Right, right. Which, uh, my problem was, I, I hit, I think I went like seven for 15. And I think I could have gotten at least 10, but the one that was straight up, I missed, and the ball came back at me, like, as I was in the middle of a shot. So it just messed me up. So, I mean, I'll, I'll make as many excuses for myself as I can, but I could have hit at least 10. Millennial That's collective wins. Formerly the Bristol Bees. The shot clock is off, and this is going to be winding it down now. Yeah, I didn't have the stats this time, but uh, who I do think uh, deserves our Bayhawks player of the game, I think that goes to Zachary Viega because he was just so big out the gates at the beginning scoring. He was leading the team in points during the half. I didn't see him too much towards the second half, but he was so big early on with points and rebounds. I think we're going to have to give it to him today.
doubleheader with the Lady Bayhawks and Men's Bayhawks team in action. So for Craig, for David Cardoza, Craig Salvador, Lucy, Cabral, Aral, Cabral, on the camera work, and Sean, Sean Paul, <laughs> Sean Paul. All right, thank you for joining us. Look, look forward to having you join us for more Hawk Bayhawks basketball in the future. Check your local listings. For Cardoza, Cabral, Sean Paul, and Craig, See you later, and happy Veterans Day on Florida. Bristol Community College Bayhawks versus Springfield Technical Community College.